Welcome to another episode of Amplify What You Love. I'm your host, Kaylee Marks, and on today's episode, I have brought on one of my favorite people, Sri Kala. Stick around till the end because he gives some really practical writing exercises that will help you to find your voice, to share your voice, and to have a great time doing it. Kala is a true master of his craft. He is a songwriter, music producer, and a coach for artists who want to unlock their truest creative expression and share that with the world. He's toured the country. He has shared his music on many stages and collaborated with some of the biggest names in the conscious music scene. He is an incredible artist, and I am so excited to share my conversation with you. There's also some music woven throughout this episode. I remixed one of Srikala's tracks. That's going to be in there. And at the end, I'm going to share some of his music as well. I hope you enjoy this. And now let's hear from Srikala. Srikala, welcome. I'm so grateful that you made time to hop on the show, man. How are you doing today? You know, today is a good day. It's been getting warmer and warmer out here in Arizona. And um, yeah, I know you just moved to a really special place uh, in my heart in Arizona. Would you share where you're at? Yeah, yeah. I'm in I'm in Sedona. I'm in Sedona, Sedona, Arizona. Wow, the landscape is a magical place. It's a magical place. So I like I like how you said that, Sedona, Arizona. Wow, that's the that's basically the sound you make when you get that first glimpse of the red rocks and the sun reflecting off of them. It's uh, it's pretty extraordinary. Yeah on your way through. Yes, indeed. Yeah, man. So I wanted to share you with my audience. You've, you've, you've blessed us with your appearance before on a, on a previous episode with two other brothers, but I haven't had a chance to actually bring you on and just talk to you. And you've been, you've played a really big role in my life. You've been a huge inspiration and you've, you know, I've taken some of your coaching programs before and learned a ton from you had a opportunity to remix one of your amazing tracks, which I'll, I might en- end up playing in this episode, actually. Um, and you're just like a really powerful force in the world. You know, when I when I mentioned you being a conduit of love, like you just exude so much love, so much truth, and you balance like a, a fierceness with so much softness, gentleness, love, understanding. And it's just, it's, I'm really happy you're here. I'm really happy to talk to you. And I really specifically want to talk to you about how you hone your truth and your message and how you help others hone their truth and their message. Because one of the things I hear across the board with everyone I work with and who I talk to is almost this fear to step forward and fully share ourself with the world. Like there's so much that comes up and I, I really want to to serve my audience with giving them as many tools as possible to combat some of the, those voices that keep us from doing that. And so I was hoping that you could start by maybe sharing a little bit about your journey uh, up till now with discovering your voice, with sharing your truth, with sharing your love with the world. And we'll start there and we'll see where this takes us. Yeah. Well, first I'd like to say what a blessing it is to circle up with you. I think that that you've always been a, a catalyst for love, you know? So love, love recognize love right here. Love recognize love. And um, it's so good that we, we get together to do these things because it just allows so much, so much more evolution for the planet, you know? Uh, so much more nourishment because there's so much nourishment that's needed right now on the planet. Uh, as far as my journey with voice and my journey with creative expression, uh, it's been, it's been an unfolding adventure. It's still unfolding, and from what I've come to learn, it will always unfold. It will always, I will always be able to go deeper and deeper into the truth of, of what wants to come through me, into, into the truth of myself, into the truth of, uh, the nature of my creative expression. So, I'm at a point right now where there's no end to this. There's no end to how many times I show up for my creative expression. 
uh, there's a certain level of of commitment to it. Uh, and uh, you know, gradually understanding that that for me, expressing, writing, singing, using my voice, using my my tools to express creatively uh, keeps me sane, you know, keeps keeps me sane and and, and it allows me, to to actually destroy sanity in a in a beautiful way. You know, the ideas of what the whole world has about what being sane means and really dropping into the truth of of you know what wants to come through me, what's the most loving thing I can do for another person, when to when to get out of there, because that's not the vibe. Like all of these world interaction things, like if I want to be alive in the world and if I wanna wanna be a uh, an enthusiastic uh, part of planet Earth. I need to do my creative expression like a practice, like a daily um, life or death situation. Yeah. And so, you know, it's unflowered, you know, it's, it's flowered and unraveled in many ways over time. I think, I think, because I grew up with the parents that I had, I got to experience a lot of music, a lot of different genres, a lot of different ways people use their voice. And um, growing up in Brooklyn, New York, it was all about rap. It was all about hip hop. It was all about R&B. Uh, and having West Indian family, reggae, dub, calypso, you know, so. And then when I left, when I kind of, migrated from Brooklyn, New York, from Bed-Stuy, you know, Bed-Stuy, you got Biggie Smalls, you got, you got, uh, you got Jay-Z, you got, you know, you know, just across the bridge, you got Nas, you got Wu-Tang, you know, so just surrounded by like the hub of artists, you know, and, uh, you know, when you're, when you're around that kind of association, even though, you know, I didn't like sit down with Wu-Tang and, you know, and even though I didn't get the physical association with Nas, still he was in my atmosphere and still he was part of my like sonic association. And I knew that they were New York people. So in a way that just gives you a, a vibe. It gives you a, a confidence like, oh yeah, uh, I'm from the land. I'm from the city of hip hop. I'm from the city of, of where, where great masterpieces emerge from the, this place. And so that kind of gave me, I felt, I felt like a natural desire and natural push to, to be, creative and to be expressive and um and then and then going from there into the skateboard world uh i got to 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 tap into some other cultures you know to kind of leave my hood in brooklyn and and expand that to to being in the city in manhattan and playing in the city uh and and then going from there like getting into that genre sublime corn limp biscuit even the Backstreet Boys at one point. <laughs> uh, and then going from there to moving into the ashram, moving into a temple where it was like, you know, kirtan, mantra, chanting, sacred, sacred sounds, um, Sanskrit vibrations and understanding like how to read the Bhagavad Gita and, 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 and then and sing it back. And, um, and now we're in the space of of kind of integrating all of that stuff, you know. Now we're in the space mm -hmm. of what is it? What does it mean to to not only use use those templates, but also what is the template for my present moment? What am I? What is my heart truly feeling? What is what is you know my grief really saying? What is my pain really saying? What is my joy really saying? And being able to express that even in a way beyond the English language, you know. Uh, and so it's, it's taking these journeys, you know, it's taking these different, different, um, points that I've gone, gone through. And, and I think that that's like a testament of just my life, just generally that I'm like, I do a lot. I do a lot. I like to take in a lot. I like to learn a lot. I like to play in a lot of different adventures, amalgamate it, and then, and then see, you know, what wants to, what wants to be shared, what wants to be used from my, my unique perspective, you know, so. That's kind of a, a brief glimpse of the journey, you know, e any of those pieces we can go deeper into, you know, 
they're like sagas, each of those. And you said so yeah. many great points in there that we, like you're saying, we could dive into. I want to highlight one thing you said, and then I want to ask you a follow-up question about sort of your upbringing in that that mecca of of hip hop and all these amazing artists. You, you mentioned valuing our creative practice. And I, I want that to kind of stick out in the listener's mind a bit too, which is sometimes yeah. I think we can we can almost devalue play like play is somehow less important than work or play is less important than you know going and and doing health things but what if it was equally as important and if we valued it as much like you said a life or death situation uh what would happen what would transpire as a result of that and i think you're definitely a testimony to what happens when you do treat it as such because it has like you've shared taken you all over the place it's taken you to so many different uh, parts of the of the of the country of the world it's taken yeah. to, to to it's just brought you all these gifts and it's helped you to touch the lives of so many people and so I just really think that that is worth underlining and and kind of time zone time zooming back to to Brooklyn I'm wondering if you remember like one of your first and most impactful moments especially around hip hop and music and, and like rap and words and poetry, like is, does anything pop out when you think back on like those first impactful times? I think about, you know, one of the things I think about is how we are uh, products of our environments. And I remember, I remember my mom finding my lyrics book, it's so cool that I even had a lyrics book at that time. I, know. I, I probably was like maybe like, you know, 14, 15, 13, some, somewhere in that area, you know. And I had a lyrics book and my mom found it. And she opened it up, read a few pages, and she came back to me with 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 intensity, let's just say. <laughs> I put it to put it lightly. She came with with intensity, you know. And and that intensity was all around just like, what the hell are you writing? You know, why are you writing this stuff? I, I remember exactly what I was, you know, the, the, the theme and, and even maybe some parts of the, of the poem. But it, it had a lot to do with like, you know, I was hanging out on the block. My cousin got shot, you know, and then like, you know, I had to go and retaliate in some kind of way. It was very, it was very gangster. It's very mm-hmm. gangster. And and the truth of it is that I never actually experienced it. I I I never actually partaked in you know gangster activities and violent activities. You know I've never I've never held a gun. You know I've never of course I've never never shot someone. Well, not of course. You know too many people have shot people. <laughs> I've never shot anybody. And I but I came from a, a neighborhood where I had to run inside because people were shooting across the streets in Brevoort projects. Mm-hmm. We had to go inside, you know, like like once or twice a week. You know, mm-hmm. so that that kind of builds a kind of situation in your nervous system, you know, that even to this day, even in Sedona, Arizona, I'm locking the doors, you know? <laughs> I'm like, I make sure the doors lock, you know, cause we come from Brooklyn, we come from New York City. That was one of my earliest memories of a, a body of work that I, that I wrote that, Although it was a beautiful expression of art at a young age, it still wasn't me. I was still in a space where I was doing it like somebody else. I was listening to the music that I was listening to, and I was writing as if I was in those scenarios and in those situations, you know. And so whenever I, I hear like these rappers these days and they're, they're talking about guns and, and how, you know, they have the whole crew. If you mess with them, they'll kill your whole family. They take your girl and all that stuff. It's like I take it with a grain of salt, you know. It's it's I take it understanding that it's not everything isn't always what what it seems. A lot of times people are just products of their environment and they're not necessarily um living that life, you know. Uh and 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 it's interesting how that happens because you grow up in that kind of atmosphere and you feel like that's the kind of thing that that is 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 life. You feel like that's the thing that will will help you get the girl or help you be cool or help you help people be attracted to your words because you're doing it like, like, you know, the, the, the latest hip hop artist is doing it in your, in your neighborhood. And it was, so it was a journey to kind of unravel that. It was a journey to, to become my own self. 
and and to even just understand how that works and how that's just a part that's a part of artistry you know i can't i can't really knock myself for doing that because it's it's a part of artistry to kind of take on the personality of someone that you that that inspires you you know we we see that in spiritual cultures and and people with their gurus and and, and certain you know traditions you know me living in the temple for example you know i came out of there with like sublime and and rascal and all these words that is is kind of really only in that community you know mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. but now i have it and i kind of weave it in with everything else uh but there's something to 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 being inspired by a personality and and wanting to learn from them wanting to emulate them but at a certain point you got to become your own at a certain point you got to drop into your own body and live your own truth so i think that that was that's a fun little story that kind of like that one of the earliest memories of my creative expression. What I like about it too so much is that A, it didn't deter you, your mom's intensity or just even just the tension that it built. It, it sounds like that was also a moment that you realized you're writing or, or not to put words in your mouth, but it's like your yeah. writing impacted someone. It actually had an effect on someone and you saw that. Wow. And, I love that. And it, yeah, and it seems so. It's interesting because you're talking about we're a product of our environment, and at the same time, you have all these amazing artists uh, around you who are influencing you, and maybe they are they have experience directly holding a gun or be, you know being in that in that vibe, and it influenced you. At what point do, do you feel like you really caught hold of your thread in your life? When like when did you be like, oh, here I am, and then start pulling on that? Well, I think there was a was a series of moments, you know, and I love that we're having this conversation because that that initial moment with my mom laying the smackdown on me about my words, uh, that was one of the first moments that that I haven't really fully pinpointed until now on this mm-hmm. on this actual on this talk with you that that was a moment where it, it, it impacted her, like you said, and. I don't think that I wrote anything like that ever again, because mm. in that moment I realized I was like, "Oh, that's not me." <laughs> mm. Like this, that's true. Like I've never experienced any of this stuff, you know. Um, and so that was kind of like a turning point. That was a pivot point. Um, you know, there are other pivot points where I think, like in a way, music started back up again. When I when I lived in the ashram, when I lived in the temple, when I lived in the temple, uh, as you know, the Krishna reality is all about music. It's all about music. It's all about art. It's all about dancing, singing, and not only just like singing, <laughs> not just like your average. You know, I'm gonna sing a song. It's like it's they encourage you to rage with your yes. song. They encourage you to sing your heart out. They encourage you to pray, you know, this in this tradition of bhakti devotion, uh, this 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 ancient system of Vaishnav uh, practice, they're like, you know, this is a crying school. Mm-hmm. Just know that at the ground level, we cry here. <laughs> you know, whether we cry about joy, celebration, or whether we cry because things suck, you know? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, no matter what it is, we're offering it forward. And I think that that was another pivot point. Like, oh, this is, it was almost a, a space where I kind of got free from my own um, self-doubt around my voice, my own self-worth around my voice. Um, this came up recently with one of my clients, you know, with one of my one-on-one clients. And she was like, how, just the nervousness that happens when you're when you're young, you know, and you, you're trying to sing, and if you're not around the right people, you know, some people will just be like, you know, that that kind of sounds whack. Yeah. It's, that sounds terrible. It sucks. You should not sing. Do this other yeah. thing that you're good at, you know? And that stays with you. And boy, does that stay with you, you know? And how for this particular client, she said that when she got into mantra and chanting, she found her voice again. It was another kind of point where she found her voice because the idea of perfectionism around performance was no longer the priority. Now it was for 
the calling out. Now it was for the prayer. Now it was for to 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 use what's going on emotionally and sing and sing it out for for something greater, for something higher. And and that became the access point back in for her. And that that's also another thing that I got to experience. That was also a, a nice relevant point that before before being in the temple that was around, you know, 18 years old. Before that life, it was pretty much a lot of hip hop, like mm-hmm. rapping, that kind of style where I'm, I'm speaking it and rapping it. Uh, I knew I had somewhat of a, a singing voice, but there was still some self-worth issues that I couldn't, I couldn't really get through. So I kind of like left that to the side until I got into the temple and I realized every, every freaking person is singing in this temple all the damn time. Singing is happening. And that really opened me up. You know, because I was singing for a higher purpose. I was singing because it was about pitch. It was about, you know, the love that you give. And that was another pivot point where it was like, oh, this is what voice could be. A, a vibration, an energy that that you could, you could convey through sound vibration, not even through saying a bunch of English words, not even through trying to get people to understand logically and like intellectually. But it's it's mantra. It's which mm-hmm. which contains a sacred vibration that if I sing it in the right mood, it'll create an even more of effect, you know. And so that you know was like huge because then that kind of erased my nervousness around singing. Next thing you know, I was I was opening up for different events, and different programs, and I was the main person leading the singing portions. And then when I left the temple, you know, my singing voice was was part of who I who I am it, it's it was integrated and and even then I still had some work to do to kind of unfold it you know but I think these these different these different time stamps are are important space of that like being getting into rap because of my surroundings you know talking that that gangster stuff because I thought that that was cool my mom being like hey don't do that that's not how I raised you I, I put in work to keep you away from that stuff. <laughs> don't don't render all of my work useless, you know? Mm-hmm. And then going from that space and, and, and into the ashram where I, where I found my singing voice. And then, you know, now it's just been a journey of, of, of how do I use my singing voice to, to express the most hidden parts of myself? Mm-hmm. How do I use the voice to resonate my body, to shake free the blockages and the debris so that I could have my energy flowing clearly, you know, and, and any, any, any art that's created, any, any kind of song that I make, any kind of, any kind of uh, poem that I write is a byproduct of me doing this work now, which is very fascinating because before it was like, I want to win a Grammy and I still want to win a Grammy. Shit. Mm-hmm. But now it's like I wanna I wanna commit myself to my art so that I can so that I can continue to be a vessel for for the the, the vibes that want to move through me and I continue to to sing the wailings of my ancestors, you know, five hundred years of, of of trauma that's that that I still to this day can identify in my bones. You know, it's 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 not something that I, I ever expect to be rid of, it's something that I expect now. I understand it now that it's art. I understand now that it's creativity. I understand now that that this this sorrow that I feel that a lot of times isn't even mine is is something that a lot of people in this world could could leave stuck mm-hmm. and not expressed. And I want to show. I want to set the example of somebody that expresses those parts of my being, expressing my anger expressing you know especially anger as as a, an emotional um resonance that i never felt comfortable with growing up because my parents expressed anger in a certain kind of way and the last thing i saw them do was get angry mm. they got angry and then they split up mm-hmm. you know it was really heavy angry moment and then that was the last time I saw the both of them together. So it was and like so, anger meant ending. Exactly. A- anger meant ending of things that I loved. Anger meant ending of family. Anger meant 
means like like hurt and pain. Mm-hmm. So so don't express it. Keep it keep it in. Keep it bottled up. Uh, and now I know that that's not true. Not only that, but I'm, I'm I'm meant to be able to see when other people are doing that to support them and 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 having that controlled chaos space to play in those areas where anger can become play, and anger can become mm-hmm. fierce love, and anger can become can become a useful uh, tool in your toolkit. It's a treasure in your treasure box that we gotta. Some of us gotta go diving for for this treasure because it's not so readily available. And so that's a part of my my creative storms, my own personal creative storms is to go into those parts so I can bring it into art so that I can express it and create something that has never arrived on this planet before. You know? Yeah, there's there's this interesting parallel too with the music that you grew up with as sort of a as the vessel for some of that anger for for that lifestyle. And then there's this parallel where you're talking about giving voice to your ancestors, like through wailing and this, and this trauma and this pain for hundreds of years. That's you're saying it's like in your bones. And there's just, I'm seeing this progression of how that's evolved from one kind of music to now, you know, you've launched recently state of heart, which is an incredibly innovative podcast. That is like this musical guided meditation uh, live performance. Uh, maybe you could speak a little bit more about it because I think it's a it's a really beautiful blossoming of everything that you've just shared so far. Yeah, yeah. And I like the word that you used, blossoming. It's definitely what what that what that that offering came from. It definitely had different uh, unravelings. You know, at, at first it was something that was more. Uh, meditative, something that was more, it wasn't as musical. And then as, as the voice started to erupt, that came, that became a really strong portion of it. And now it's in the place where the meditation and the music is one thing. Um, State of heart is uh, my own exploration into my states of heart, all of my parts, uh, taking the journey into my own body, into my own atmosphere, and giving it a sound, giving it a resonance. Uh, when I do that, it allows whoever's listening to feel into their own body. Mm-hmm. Uh, it it happens all, almost automatically. If you're around while this is happening, you it, it it feels familiar to you. It feels like it's like oh, it's like yeah, it's a very um, innate sound you know that that just comes out of me that people feel very very connected to because i'm singing the truth of my heart i'm singing the truth of my 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 gut i'm singing the truth of my what, what's going on in my cells and and i'm actively showing up to to love all parts of myself and love the listener and um and state of heart it's a it's a journey through those parts through uh, like I use my looper that's one of the main tools that I use is my RC five hundred five and I I loop different parts of my voice and sometimes a, a, a phrase will come out and I'll I'll bring in a chorus or I'll bring in like a hook or something but mostly it's me um, moving out of the way and offering sound vibration looping it and so it ends up being a performance a guided meditation uh an an exhibition you know uh and it's one of my most favorite things to do it's one of my it feels like it feels very essential now to how i offer music into the world you know uh as you know, I also, you know, I, I travel and I jump on stages and I play at festivals and events and 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 historically that's been very beat focused and, and bass and uh, singing, rapping, dropping a story or two and getting the crowd moving. Mm-hmm. And it's been a blessing to 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 have that journey 
to experience what it is to sing my own song back to people and have them sing along with me and, and do all the things that artists get to do when you're on stage. And then now this chapter is is like, what's the truth of what is here right now? What's the, what's the state of my heart? And risking letting that be seen, risking letting that be be made visible, uh, my own journey of, of, of listening, my own journey of tuning into, you know, the parts of myself. And so now my live performances contain both of these pieces together. So I have all my gear, my buttons, my Ableton with my MIDI controllers, and I'm launching off different samples and, 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 and then the, the science of people and how to be with, with a large group of people and play the right song in the right timing for people to really feel like it's an arc, or it's a storyline, or you're kind of in a movie right now. And there's things for you to do, there's things for me to do, and it's a whole experience. And then weaving that in with those moments of live improvised expression that can, that is, is, is a unique thing that has never happened before. Uh, it's a different thing. It's a different realm when you, when you're present with someone, and and going into the atmosphere is a first thought. You know, here's my here's my first thought. Here's my first heart. Here's my here's the emotion that's that's here, rather than let me filter it and 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 give you the sixth. You know. Uh, well, and, and that's what's so scary yeah. too, right? And same with like freestyling. It's like it's very vulnerable to just reveal. Here's where I am right now. Like th- this isn't yes. my pre-produced thing. This is my now. And, yeah. and I'm wondering, I mean, you've alluded to it a little bit in your story and, and you know, it's an, it's an unfolding, but how do you help art, like especially the artists you work with, how do you help people gain the courage to do that? Because it, it is extremely confronting. Yeah. Well, the first thing that jumps into my mind is that association is everything being around the right people, being around the right circle, you know, having having a guru, a coach, a mentor, whatever you want to call that person that comes in and and is able to guide you, is able to lift you up, is able to boost your self-confidence, is able to share some techniques and tools for you to go into your own expression, and most importantly, is able to see your own unique form of creative process and help you to play in it. I think that that is, is the most brilliant thing that, a, that a, a coach or a teacher is able to do is that they're, they're not just coming in so that you can become them. They're coming in to, to, to unravel you and to listen to you in a way that your own creative process comes forward. Your own capacity to listen to spirit comes forward. Your own capacity to to listen, feel, and sing what is felt comes forward. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. So association feels feels like a strong piece of, of getting of getting the confidence. Because when you're with another person that's confident, you just become confident. It's the greatest cheat code that ever existed. <laughs> it's so true. <laughs> so that's 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 one of the pieces. You know. You've also shared before in one of the programs I took with you, um, your mess is your message. Yeah. And I think there's this idea that, that like I need to hide all of my shit away (laughs) and let me just present this nice, like pedicured manicured thing to the world. But like what ends up happening, at least for me is like, I'm out, I feel out of alignment. I can feel my bullshit. And when what I think you're, you're sharing in there, you've also said no mud, no lotus, like that's where that line, that integrity comes from. And so it's almost like one of the, th- the thing that we're most afraid of is also what's going to most align us and, and probably speak to the largest group of people. Yes, yes. You know that your message, your message, that point is, is the essence of every creative block. Mm. Every creative block is, is rooted in, in this space where, you know, I'm working with someone and they're like, I don't have anything today. I don't have, you know, there's nothing running. There's no inspiration that, you know, I don't, I don't know what to write. I don't know what to sing. Like, like, what do I express? What do I, where do I go? 
every time when I tune into it, every time there's something that they just don't want to say, there's something that they just don't want to express because they feel it's too yucky, it's too impure, it's mm-hmm. too um, sad, it's too grievy, it's so much grief. You know, I need to I need to wait until I get beyond that to share my creativity. You know, to to real then real expression comes, and and. You know, that's the thing that we want to unravel. That's the thing that we want to rewrite, redefine. That's the big, big energy that's in the planet right now is that your mess is your message. You know, you're, you know, and that's, it's on the planet right now, but it's always been around. You know, when we think about these, these, these ancient texts and these poems that were written in the temples, you know, like these, 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 the, like the highest ranking, you know, spiritual teachers are like, I'm like a worm in stool, you know, they're, they're going deep in, in like how messy their experience is, you know, yeah. and, and it, within a prayer and you can see like Rumi saying stuff like that, like Rumi bringing forth, you know, and so this, I, this reality that there's, there's never a place where you need to stop your creativity. It's all, you know, how much are, have you, have you given the time to tune into that messiness and add it to your your play, add it to your prayer, add it to your creativity. And so, yeah, that that piece that piece is huge to be able to to tune into that and use it, you know. Hey everyone, Kaylee here. Let's take a quick break and I wanted to share with you the remix that I did of Shri Kala's track Already Here. This is part of a compilation album with a ton of other fantastic artists who all remix this wonderful track from Shri Kala. And I'm going to play a little bit for you here. And then we're going to get back into the episode where Shri Kala is going to share an extremely useful writing and creativity tool and practice that you can include into your process. And I will also include a PDF that you can go ahead and grab uh, in the show notes. All right, so here is my remix of Already Here by Shrikala. Energy, hold tight. Feel it in my bones when it's out of sight. Fortified for the ride. Yearning for everything all the time. Yeah, the goal is what I see. But I fall in love with the journey It overflows And here's the key So that you can dig into this treasury Everything you want is already
everything you want is so already here. I'm wondering if here would be a good spot if you would be willing to share some like really practical way that the listeners could start to do that sharing to to embark on that process and maybe this is like a writing exercise or something but like how how can we practically begin to reveal that part and begin to actually share our our essence and our truth and and really um, tap into that source yeah well one of the things that i really love is kind of one of the first things that i i always share and i always bring forth whether it is a, a one-on-one program or whether it is a, a group program it's it's our ability to to sit in front of our our pen and paper or keyboard you know with an open document whatever is your writing space and pour out what we're thinking what we're feeling and just get raw on that paper um it's so important that that the heart storm space is what I like to call it. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't really call it brainstorm anymore. I call it the heart storm, and the the beauty of this. And I know that that in many circles, you know, like Julia Cameron and like you know, mm-hmm. uh, any any writer, kind of famous, kind of creative, expressive writer that we know of, speaks about the the power of free writing, the power of of pouring your your mind and your heart over the paper every day. Uh, The next level that I want to add to it and something that I found for myself is that a lot of times when we think about making artwork or we think about writing a song or we think about anything, like even like having a business plan, like going into a meeting with an idea about what you want to talk about, you know, a lot of times we go at that and we try to write exactly the thing. We try to write exactly the song, like go straight for writing the first verse, you know, right when you put your hand to, to the paper. And, and we won't write the next line until it is the exact line, you know. And there is a time and space for that because sometimes poems and songs and masterpieces want to come out just as it is. And, and for me, there's an importance to the chaos, the controlled chaos. To, to give yourself time to be in that space of chaos. So, you know, this could happen in, in movement. This could happen in, you know, give yourself a space to kind of see what your body wants to do. And I even love this. If you're writing something to get up and move your body is huge mm-hmm. for you writing, which is, you know, we don't always think about like physical movement and how, how it frees you up for your mind to, to work and to flow and for your energy to move through your channels so that, you can actually express more freely. But then when you put your words on that paper without having so much boundaries around yourself and so much frameworks, like I gotta write for this thing, Mm -hmm. but you just put a theme at the top of the paper. You know, you could even do that. Like if I'm writing about um, mattresses, you know, if I'm writing about how nice it is to lay on a mattress or something, I can just put mattresses at the top of the paper and then let myself go, you know? Love being on a mattress, playing on it, rolling on it, jumping off it. I backflip off of mattresses into a pool of milk, and in that milk, I spit it out, and become it becomes a fountain that 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 inundates the entire planet. And next thing you know, everybody is swimming in milk because that's the only thing that is around you. There's no longer any air. Everyone's now breathing in milk. We've all grown gills to to participate in this new ecosystem of. You know, see, like, I'm so, suddenly I was on a mattress. Now I got gills. You know, and so this this letting yourself go on these adventures is so important because it kind of unravels you, and and then from that space you can see what you've written and either pull out the gems to then write your song with, or you can take your 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 newly opened state and 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 start writing. And so that that import that the brilliance of separating your wildness, your freedom from your 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 kind of set theme, your your kind of set uh, outcome of writing a song or writing an article, you know, like have have two different areas for those for that process. I think that that's really valuable. Yeah. 
Thank you so much for sharing that with the audience. And I will attach a PDF to this episode that just kind of summarizes uh, that practice for you all if you want to download that and uh, go deeper with this. That was a really wholesome and well-rounded way to approach it and kind of get through some of, as you mentioned, like there's some creative blocks that can come up for people, but you gave some real useful tools there. And I know that we're we're coming up close to the end of, of our interview here, but I, I did want to ask you a little bit um, since you recently created a very unique masterpiece, potentially one of the greatest creations you could make, you you made a whole human being. And I was uh, wondering how that experience has been for you. Oh, man. I made one of those. Made a, I made a human. <laughs> a human is a human is here. You know, honestly, my beloved and I, we we weren't planning on having a child. We actually planned to not have a child. We actually sat, we, we spoke about it, and we were like, we're not having kids in this lifetime. We're gonna we're gonna have that freedom. We're gonna move around. We're gonna have our kids will be our projects, our kids will be our clients, our kids will be, you know, these these are where we're gonna put our love and our attention and our energy. And um and suddenly that all changed, you know. I think it's it's just the, the work that I was doing on myself, it's the work that she was doing on herself. And 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 it was also uh our son's desire to come onto the planet. Mm -hmm. He was knocking on that door pretty hard. And we were like, shit, you know, I was like, what? <laughs> what's that knocking? You know, like looking up, like, what's that knocking? You know, and after after a while, you're like, you, you want to like, you know, soften a little bit and surrender enough mm. to, to, to really look through that, through the peephole to see who's on the other side of the door. And we and we saw him and we're like, oh, OK, OK, let's. Let's let's make room. Let's make room for you to come through, and um, it's a beautiful it's a beautiful project. You know, it's a beautiful song that was birthed <laughs> uh, because it's still being formed. You know, this song that is my son, mm -hmm. and he's like, he's so demanding in his in his need for attention that everything that. I had previous to his arrival in the sense of like anything that was on my calendar or, or things that, that I used to even just distract myself from what was the highest expression, what was most important. Uh, I don't have time for it. I don't have time to do all this extra stuff anymore. Um, and I'm someone that likes to do. Do, 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 do. I'm doing this, I'm doing that. I got this project, I got that project. And when he arrived, he, he looked in, in my face and he was like, all right, which projects you really want to do? <laughs> because you're not going to be able to do it all. Which ones you really want to do? And I think that that is essential for every artist, child or no child, to, to be able to, 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 to get absorbed in your art, to get absorbed in, in, in knowing what your priorities are. Not that you're never going to do certain things, but there's certain things that are, are meant for you to do now and certain things that, that go on your drawing board to be done later. And I think that that's, I heard that this was something that a child brings. Like, I'm like, you know, everyone says this, you know, you get a child, watch out. You're not gonna have any time, you know? Uh, and I'm and I'm like, yeah, yeah, whatever. I will not make it work. You know, I'm gonna have him in the studio, you know, we're just, we're just gonna be, everything's gonna keep moving. And, and oh man, it's, it is like that because we are very resilient. You know, Jesse and I, my wife, we're we're really into living our joy. We're really into um, doing what we love doing, no matter what, no matter if we have a son. We we want to make it. We want to understand how we can continue to live and express ourselves truly and and and, and wholesomely. And so uh, there's that opportunity to to understand what that means now that we have a, a child. And then there's the opportunity to get absorbed and make the child that thing that we're doing. And it's like, you know, it's so fascinating to walk in the room every now and then and see my wife on the bed with our son. And he's like, 
nursing or just doing this thing. And she's just watching him, nursing him and doing nothing, you know, like not on the phone, not watching TV, not doing any of the extra curricular stuff that we like to do just, just when we're alone. She's just being, you know? And so he's, he's bringing out, uh, this, this, this newborn, this baby, our son is bringing out these qualities of like, just be here, Mm. just be here. You don't need to do all this stuff. You don't need to run all over this place trying to make things happen all the time. Just be here with me. Mm. And it's so fascinating. It's like coming down from an addiction, you know, to be with our sons, it's like feels like coming down from an addiction. Like we're still dealing with that. We're like, oh, I can't go and just pick up my phone and start scrolling. Oh. Like we're itching because we're just like, we can't do it, you know? And then take a deep breath, look into his eyes and be like, okay, this is where I am. This is where I am. And he's ruthless, bro. He's ruthless. He's like, as soon as I pick up the phone, he's like, oh, oh you know, like he knows, he knows when I'm doing it. He knows when the attention is not, it's not hot. He feels it instantaneously, you know, like, like, like I'm not even playing. I'm not even talking about like, pick up the phone, I'm on the phone for a little while, and then he figures it out. No, it's like, if I'm, if I'm touching the phone and I'm about to lift it, bursts out into just, in, into just like, agony <laughs> oh why is why is life this way you know and and i have to you know if i'm doing something important i got to do it quick and put it down mm-hmm. or or i got to leave it alone and then we he's, just got to get on the schedule he's like really demonstrating that everything you want is right here is right, right here, here bro right now yes. right yes. here right now let it come to you turn on your magnet get your attention into the present it's really powerful to hear this. It's really sweet to hear this. It's, uh, it's jo- it brings me joy to hear about you and your family and and the the growth of of the new member of the family and just like how you are integrating it and the lessons that you are are getting from it. And you know, I I would love to, if you would share with my audience if they were interested in working with you and learning more about you. What is the best way that they could do so? I'd love to say thank you for this conversation. It's fascinating when when I get to sit down with 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 someone and unfold things that I haven't even thought about, like that point with my mom and the fact that that was an intense moment for her. And that was one of the first times that I felt uh, my impact on the world. You know, I didn't, it didn't hit me. So just talking with you, I love how it's just unraveling different pieces. So grateful for you, for you bringing me on to have this conversation and to to get to get deep inside of ourselves and, and, and express. So people can find me um Shrikala.com, S-R-I-K-A-L-A.com. I think that that's the the easiest way. I got all my channels there. I got my Instagram there. I got I got everything that you need to find. You know, state of heart, uh unique masterpiece. Everything is kind of contained in that container. Uh, one of my my most focused on like social media platforms right now is Instagram. So you can find me there kind of updating that regularly with my team. And, uh, and you can sit in meditation, you know, and visualize me and tune into the, the truth of what you're feeling and offer that forth. And I'm sure the circumstances will lead to where we will, we will find each other. <laughs> I certainly think so. I feel like that's how how it worked out with our connection. And I uh, I will leave all this information in the show notes. It's always a joy to get to speak with you, brother. And wanted to offer you, if you're down, short little time capsule, if you'd like to leave a message for your son for the future or for any son in the future. any You've already left a lot of, a lot of good stuff, but this is a space if you want to amplify a little bit of what you love for your for your son in the future, this is a space for you. I will say that everything that I just shared is the time capsule. Everything that I just shared is is what I want you to know. Kanai, my son, listen to this episode. Uh, circle up with with people that 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 champion your greatness. Have these conversations. Uh, get messy by yourself, and then and then that own in, in your own spaces, with 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 someone or, or with a group that could really honor your mess and then get messy 
in conversations that are complex in the world. Uh, live with fierce love in every moment. See how see how far you can take it. That this fierceness of love. And uh, get on get on Kaylee's podcast. <laughs> please, please do, please do. It's a blessing to be with you, brother, and, yes, and I'll see you very soon in the future. Yes, yes. What a blessing. All right, everyone. I hope that that episode served you and that you got something of value from it. I hope that you check out the writing exercise, which I will attach as a PDF that you can download completely free. Let me know how that exercise goes for you. And please check out Shri Kala's music. He's on Spotify, Apple, all the, all the music places. And let me know if you would like more of these music-centered episodes. If you enjoy this, I would love to continue to bring you more valuable content that serves you in your journey in sharing your voice with the world. And if you would please you be willing, if you've made it this far, I know you're one of the diehard true on his fans. Podcast, if you'd please leave us a rating and review on iTunes, it podcasts. really does help us grow the show. It helps show everyone that people are tuning in. And of course, follow us. On Instagram, you can find me at k.lee, L-E-E, Marks, on Instagram, as well as at the podcast farm. All right, everyone. Until next time, I'm Kaylee Marks, and this is Amplify What You Love. All right, friends, as promised, here is Sri Kala's guided meditation, Divine's Doorstep. And you can find more of these blissful musical meditations on his podcast, State of Heart, wherever you listen to podcasts. Welcome, Srikala here, and you are listening to State of Heart, vocal soundscapes and guided meditations for the modern mystic. Episode 2, Divine's Doorstep. So dropping into being completely aware of where you are right now. This momentous occasion, that is you. Allowing yourself to begin to listen to where is your state of heart? What is your state of heart? Tuning into it, listening to it, being guided to connect to it, dropping into it, surrendering to it, allowing
allowing yourself to listen and welcome whatever it is that you're experiencing right now. Releasing any working. Grief and praise are on the same coin of love, two sides on the, on the coin of love. So let it, let this calling welcome you home.
surrender again in this moment. Drop. Give yourself. right now and allow yourself to be even with those grips not as things that need to be released and removed right now but things that needs to be welcomed into your love and from that space Again, checking to see the nature. 
picture of your surrender. You see that combination? The checking is a kind of a doing. The checking is a kind of an action. But it's an action only up to the point of your allowing. Only up to the point of your decision to soften right here, right now, and receive.
shock wave that penetrates into these dimensions where the divine resides and it creates a pathway where energy can flow into this world in you and through you and so you are welcome to join me in a wailing for the divine a calling for the divine let this be a crying school no no professionalism needed let this be the crying school and wail and, and, and call out with your full heart to the doorstep of the divine and watch what magic happens in that space. Magic happens in that space. Joining me in your own way.
sound of earth. Letting yourself keep this awareness, keep this embodiment, keep this call, letting yourself allow again and again throughout the day. And to close this session, something that will be really, really juicy to do from this space is to anchor in what you are claiming. Perfect radiant health, your service in the world, your clients, however this juicy energy that you, this attention, this fire you've stoked it must flow from you. Spend some time with this, leaning into what you're calling in in this world, releasing the fact that it even happening and just play with that reality. You can do it through writing, you can do it through dancing, whatever that means for you. Thank you for being here. Blessings and love.